Good morning. Is there still time to repent? Today we're at Jeremiah 4, verse 14 through 18. And I'm glad we're here at verse 14. Let's read the whole section. O Jerusalem, wash your heart from wickedness, that you may be saved. How long shall your evil thoughts lodge within you? For a voice declares from Dan and proclaims affliction from Mount Ephraim. May make mention to the nations, yes, proclaim against Jerusalem, that watchers come from a far country and raise their voice against the cities of Judah. Like keepers of a field, they are against her all around, because she has been rebellious against me, says the Lord. Your ways and your doings have procured these things for you. This is your wickedness, because it is bitter, because it reaches to your heart. Now, we saw near the beginning of this chapter that judgment, it appears now that the judgment is in process. The, God, the lion has left his lair. He's, he's coming. The armies are going to invade. God has gone ahead and, and pressed the button. You know, the thing is in process of happening. And yet still, here is a plea to return. I, I thought it was too late. I thought it was too late. But here it is in verse 14. So Jerusalem here represents all the people, the whole kingdom, and you have the king, the princes, the prophets, uh, the priests, rather, and the prophets, uh, the main institutions in, in the culture. Uh, we've seen already that all four of those institutions are totally out to lunch. There's, they've gone away from him, and they've not turned back. The nation's not turning back. All of the appeals, the appeals of Jeremiah, of God speaking through his prophet, the different other ways that God has appealed, it's all come to nothing. And now, here comes judgment. Now, even though it seems kind of sad here, the very fact that God is still calling them to repent and turn and, and be saved, that very fact is actually very hopeful. He's asking them to acknowledge that they've sinned against him. We've read that again and again coming up to this point. The fact, if we could make, if they could make just that step, if they could actually acknowledge their sin, that would be a giant step forward in terms of coming right with God. And it would be the same for you and I. As we seek the Lord Jesus, we need to uh, we need to understand that we've done wrong. We need to understand that we have that we have sinned, and we need to turn to Him and acknowledge fully our guilt. No little wishy-wash pieces in there saying, "Well, you know, I've done kind of wrong, but if it hadn't been for factor X, factor Y, and factor Z, I wouldn't have." I don't think. Don't go there. Don't go there. What we need to do is just acknowledge our guilt, own it completely. And watch for God's mercy. Now, it's always true, we cannot wash our own heart. We can't do that. Only Jesus can wash our hearts. And yet, the way it's represented here is, Jerusalem, wash your heart from wickedness. Now, the reason that's presented that way is because there's a cooperative piece going on here. There's a cooperative element. We don't get any credit for it, any merit for it. We don't earn our salvation. Don't, don't, don't go there. But there's a part we need to do. We need to surrender to him. We need to allow him to work. We need to invite him to work. He has given us free choice. It is ours to exercise. We can't, uh, if, he did, if he did all of our choices for us, we, we'd be what? A bunch of robots. He'd be a god of a bunch of robots. What, what's that? No, God gave us a heart. He gave us a mind. He gave us will. He gave us rationality. He leaves the decision to us. And so we personally have a part, and our part is to choose him. We're not the power. We don't have the power. And even our choosing him is something that he gives us. Even that's not something that we, we can do on our own. But he makes it possible for us, and he leaves it with us. We need to choose him, and there is where we need to come to the foot of the cross and believe in Jesus and accept his forgiveness. We are free agents, and even in the judgment of a nation, God is still looking to the hearts of individuals. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, we are thankful that although it seems despairing, it looks uh, looks kind of hopeless. We're thankful that instead of the, in spite of that, Lord, that you have a, you have hope, even for the individuals, even if there were just a few righteous people and the rest of the nation was wicked and, and judgment bound, you would take that into account, Lord. But in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. God be with you in this beautiful new gift, this beautiful day that God has given to you.